All right, so it's been 30 minutes. I think it needs a little more fuel. Yeah, it was actually well over 300 degrees earlier and now it's down to 300 again, so. And the coals are slowly getting white and spreading, but they should have been ready by now. So I'm gonna add some more because it's not getting to the temperature I want. And the next time I think I'm gonna put those lighter cubes in underneath the, the bottom grate in there. I think once I get the right amount of fuel in here, it's gonna make all the difference. There are other options you can use for starters, like the kindling wood that I showed you previously. And then also there are some, it's like a twine type of thing you can buy. It's a, it's a natural wood-based twine that's really good for starting these kind of things. And I did learn, especially from a few of your comments, to leave the chimney top open so that you get good airflow from the bottom to the top. And we should be able to hit those 500 plus temperatures that I wanna use for cooking a steak with good searing. And you can see there's some black smoke coming out of here right now and sometimes you'll see some thick white smoke coming out. That's when you know you're not ready to start cooking the meat. These are just some little pointers I picked up from some of the viewer comments out there so I appreciate all you guys because you know I may help you move forward but you guys help me move forward too and I appreciate your help. Because then I can share that with everyone here who's trying to figure out how to do all this stuff maybe for the first time in some cases. Just like it is for me. I'm excited about trying something different, getting branching out into barbecuing like this. Even though it's just this small little grill here, you know, this is the first step. And for those of you who are looking for a good portable grill, boy does it do a good job of getting hot. And it would go great on a small porch or something like that too. But hopefully now I'll get the temperature where it should be. Alright, so it's been 20 minutes now and we're at 500 degrees. So we're on the right pace. The smoke is pl practically clear coming out of here. Let's take a look at the coals. Still black in a few places. So I'm going to let it sit a little longer to get them nice and white. And then we'll come back and start cooking our steak. So I'm going to take this steak now and get it ready while we're waiting on the grill to get to the right temperature. My wife picked these steaks up the other day and they cut the fat off again. Thankfully they gave her the fat separately, but they still charged her for the fat. So you know how that goes. At least they let her have it. I was glad. But you know, to be honest, I'm going to tell you guys because it, it reminds me what you guys are going to face when you go to the store and ask for these things. Tell them you want the steak cut to the thickness you want, which I asked for an inch and a quarter, and do not cut the fat off. If they cut the fat off, tell them, I don't want these ones. Make me some more that have it with the fat still on. The only thing I want you to cut off is the silver skin on the opposite side of the fat. Silver skin is no fun to chew on. All right, so I'm going to let these sit in some smoked salt. Even though I don't necessarily need smoked salt for the grill, I just love my Redmond smoke salt. I've been using it on eggs. I haven't had very many eggs this month, but we did have some eggs this morning. That's only the second time in March I've had eggs. I've been trying to cut back to see what's been causing some of my joint pain. You know, I've, I've told you guys that I worked at UPS throughout the holidays and I was kind of blaming all my joint pain on that, but I haven't been there for a month and I still feel a lot of inflammation in my joints. So I've been cutting back on some of the foods that I've added back in the lion diet, like eggs and butter. So I just eliminated everything just to make sure that I'm not causing my own problems. Uh, I did go see a chiropractor and he said that I'm pretty jacked up. So I'm going to have to go back to see him a few times. That could be the source of all my problems. I hope to be able to try some of these other foods again soon. But for now, I'm thankful just to have good old lion diet and all that it's done for me over this time period has been fantastic. I love Redmond Smoke Salt because I can get the flavor that I want without having any unnatural flavoring going on. It's just salt 
smoked with uh, whatever their chef's blend mix uses. So whatever type of wood they use to do the chef's blend, I'm sure it's a blend of a couple different woods. Now they do make uh, a hickory smoked salt and a cherry wood smoked salt. Cherry wood is my favorite, but my family seems to like all of them almost equally. My wife likes the cherry as much as I do. The hickory is kind of my, uh, my second favorite. I think she said it's her first favorite. So, you know, they're everybody's favorite one way or another in this household. So you got to give them all a try if you really want to see which one you like the best. But I'm going to let this sit while we're waiting on that grill to get up to temperature, which shouldn't be too much longer. And then we'll throw it on there and see what we can do. All right, they've been in here for 40 minutes now. We're at about 570 degrees. So I think that's good enough. We're going to go ahead and add it because the smoke coming out is clear. And we should be ready to eat in just about six to eight minutes. Some of you have asked me why I'm not using the meter when I cook the steak in here. I'm using searing temperatures, which are well over 500 degrees, and the meter is really only good for up to 527 degrees. So anything above that, and you risk damaging the meter. If I was using it on grilling or baking or even smoking section of the grill, then it would be much better to use the meter. All right, it's been three minutes. Perfect. Oh, it looks good. Now I notice also as I've put the meat in, the temperature has dropped. It was down to 500 degrees when I just flipped it now, and now it's dropped down to 460 degrees. So it might be better to actually wait till the temperature gets a little higher. I'm going to open up the bottom grate here so it'll really let air flow. One thing you want to be sure you do with a grill like this is this entire exterior is hot. Don't touch it anywhere but on the handles. You definitely don't want to touch it up here. You might benefit from one of those gloves that's made for grilling. I don't have one. I have a regular pot holder here, but that's just in case I have to touch something like that. If I was reaching in to grab the grill itself, I'm going to use the tongs, and then I could use the pot holder to hold the grill as well. And I got my Safe Rail digital thermometer. I'll put a link in the description for all of this stuff. I do not have a link for this plate. So many people have asked for a link for this plate. This was a gift from my mother-in-law. For Christmas a couple years ago she believes she got it from TJ Maxx which is a clearance store their website doesn't show anything like this and since they are a clearance store they typically just see stuff come and go so I wish I could tell you because I love this plate I've seen a lot of other plates available like it on Amazon I have put a link to a couple of those in the description but I wish I could tell you how you guys could get some more of these let me check my temperature now that it's been a little over six minutes 124 We'll let it go for a little longer. Set a timer for two minutes. Two minutes, counting down. I'm glad it doesn't take long to cook these steaks because this camera will get overheated real quick out here in this hot Florida sun. <laughs> and it's 78 degrees out here right now. It was 39 degrees when I went to work yesterday. This hot and cold is making my body go nuts with these temperature changes. But I'm not complaining. I love my Florida heat. Sorry about the construction noise in the background. They're finally back working on my house. We're hoping to have this thing finished by the end of April. All right, there goes my two minute timer. Let's see how we're looking now. 141. Well, one minute would have been enough, it looks like. Oh, look at that. There you go. In just a matter of minutes, we got a steak ready to go. Of course, it took a while to get the heat going, but hey, I think it's gonna be worth it. Let's see what it tastes like. So I'm just gonna close off the grill now. Close off the top. And that'll let it cool down. I can't believe I wasn't recording this whole time. So Luke and Levi have both already tasted the steak. I thought I had the camera recording, but I had it off. I'm not as big of a fan of the charred flavor on the edges here, but Levi and Luke both prefer the grill over the air fried steak. Luke likes the charred crispiness of the outside. I think when I cook from frozen, they taste better to me coming out of the air fryer. But that just goes to show we're all different and we don't all like the same things but all of us are benefiting from a higher meat diet. 
I thought I was I recording when I had Levi and Luke trying them, but I didn't. Okay. Give it a taste. Mmm, that's good. <laughs> oh, that's really good. Mmm. How does it compare to the ones I take out of the air fryer? Honest opinion. That tastes like char grilled. You know what I mean? Tastes grilled, like with charcoal. It has that flavor. Yeah. I like it. All right. You're probably chomping that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. Oh, it's really good. Well, for me, the black is a little too much. Really? I, I like the it. air fryer a little bit better. Right. But. You know, I like that. Just goes to show we're not all the same. Like and if you're looking for a great tasting steak, that little Kamado grill seems to be doing a good job. Mm -hmm. If you got the right fuel, the right fire starter, and the right meat, you're gonna come out good every time. Yeah, I like that a lot. I like that flavor. I mean, it's nice to have that flavor. Have the air fryer too, but then go, well, I want something to smoke here. Like, just change up the flavor of the steak from time to time. Yeah. Not bad at all. Yeah, I can understand that. Right. I don't mind it either. I like it for the change too. But I had a steak yesterday that I made in the air fryer from frozen that was over two inches thick. Yeah. And it was just like heaven. Though this is delicious. Mm -hmm. It's a different type of flavor. Right. I've never really been keen on that blackened flavor as much. But I think if I get it a little bit less, if I'd have taken it off a minute earlier, I think this steak would have been perfect. I do. I'm sure a lot of other people are going to like it too. You want another bite? Yeah, sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. My oh my, is that good. So there you have it, folks. Getting better with the grill. Keep checking me out because I'm going to keep working on that. As I get better, hopefully you'll learn some of the ins and outs that I'm learning as I go. Like how I didn't start it right today. And maybe I didn't use enough fuel to begin with. But I'm getting there. And hopefully it'll save you from making those mistakes that frustrate you to the point that you don't want to press on. You know, that's one thing I used to have a hard time getting over until I learned this way of eating. It has really helped me to get through times where I just don't feel like I'm making it like I should. Or when I'm getting frustrated with something, I'm able to push through unlike I used to be able to do. This diet has changed so much. Aside from my body, my mind, my attitude, my whole life has been affected by Lion Diet. And I love being able to share these videos with you on, on how we try out new meats and keep some variety in with a diet that doesn't have a whole lot of variety of ingredients. I'll see you guys next time. If we pay extra, could we maybe get some grease or fat?